And we're live. We Hello, everyone. Hi. We, have, we actually have no viewers yet, so we'll wait until um, we do. <laughs> That's it's kind of bleak, isn't it? Wow. It's exciting. I'm watching. I'm your biggest fan. Uh, okay, well, that's crazy. That's okay. We can just um, we'll watch the group just... chat to make sure no one's saying anything inappropriate. There's a group chat. Uh, yes. Yeah, so at the on the upper left of your Hangouts window, there's a little like text bubble thing. Oh yeah, yeah. We should uh, keep that open. Just to. Uh... Hi everyone who's not here but maybe watching this afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Hello. It's very exciting. So this is Q and A part two. Yes. There was a part one. You weren't there. No. So but there was a part. Well, one. you were there in the background. I was there in the background. I was manning the chat. True. Were you? So, I think. Were you sick then? Yeah. Yeah. It was. I was very excited, and then it just didn't work because I was sick all day. So. Okay. I'm sad. Anyway, it no one sad. is sick now. I mean, not sick on usual anyway. No, I'm not so, sick, um, and now I'm here, which is very exciting. Still no one. I'm checking to see if we're live. We are live. We are live. Huzzah. Okay. Well. Oh, we have three viewers now. Yay, three Yay! viewers. That's Yay! probably just us. That's probably just our account. I was starting to feel like like when we had to pick teams at high in you know in elementary school for yep. kickball. I was like, oh, no one loves And it was that. like everybody else and it's, um yeah, yeah. Everyone but him. Yeah, Does that happen to you that. too? Oh, that definitely happened to me. Mm. They would basically negotiate. We would like, be well, playing with fountain pens every day. Yeah. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> we'd we'd yeah, probably true. be hanging out with our friends watching sports. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We all, we all, all have right. our team. We've got, we've got a group of people here. So, um, yeah. Let me forget. I'm I'm running the camera. Welcome everyone <laughs> to our our Q and A uh, with with me, Matt Armstrong from the Pen Habit, and we've got Stephen Brown and Aziza Asgarali from Gourmet Pens and SBRE Brown. Just strike in case. that, reverse it, just in case you, you weren't just sure. In case. I don't know. So, uh, actually yeah. like a gourmet <laughs> pens kind of gal. Growing up my beard. Oh. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Moving so, on. So, uh, we have a bunch of questions. There's also on the YouTube link that I posted on my Twitter feeds a live chat. So, if you're, please feel free to join in on the chat. We should be able to see it here. Actually, I don't think we can see it here. I'm going to have to open it up in a separate window, methinks. Give me just a oh, second to dear. do that so I can make see what's going on over there. Yeah, all right. Sounds good. And yeah. then I can serve as moderator. This is good, good television right here. It's good. Oh, yeah. Sorry, that was, just, that, was just, that was just us. Are you watching yourself on YouTube? I am watching myself on YouTube. This is that okay. madness. Good. Good television right here. Okay. Oh, yeah. So now I'm going to mute myself so I don't hear myself about five seconds later. Okay. So now. <laughs> <laughs> if you say something oh, intelligent. Huh? That's not much. Of, that's probably not going to happen. This is me we're talking about after all. Okay. So let's see where the live chat is. It disappeared. There we oh, go. Oh, wow. Okay. That is really cool. I did not even know this existed. Which is this that we didn't know existed? I didn't know there was a live chat thing. Oh, yeah, over on it's YouTube. really cool. Uh, so we've got, let's see, we've got Michelle and Paul and William and Fielding and Gremia Pens and Andy and TJ and Fielding. Okay, so yeah, it looks like... Uh, All right. Looks like okay, I'm, I in. have the chat open, but I cannot respond and do this at the same time. So I'm just going to follow as long <laughs> as well. Okay, so hi everybody in the chat. It's super exciting that people are actually here. And we're very happy that Steph is here because when Steph's in the room, everything lights up. So that's always a good idea. Or just goes into insanity. Why not both? That's Which is not a bad thing. So. Shall we? Uh, shall we get into some questions? Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. So we had a bunch of uh, a bunch of questions submitted. We also had some leftover questions from the last Q and A that we did that we may get to at some point today. So, but uh, if you're over in the chat chat. Um, uh, you can ask questions, and I'll try to interject them when I can. So, uh, Stephen, you Marcus, can just raise your hand says if hello. A yes. So, That's cute. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you um, start with the first one from your? Uh... Okay. So the first one uh, I have is uh, we get these questions a lot, but we'll ask it again. Uh, we've got uh, 
Here's the question. What are each of your favorite fountain pen, paper, and inks? So I will go first. Favorite fountain pen, and I have it here somewhere so I can show you because it is my new happy pen of happiness. Oh, that was a good idea. Um, is you know, this lovely monster here. This is the Classic Pens LB5. That's the one you're going to give to me, right? <laughs> In your dream, sister. Yeah. Oh, so um, uh, this is the Midorigi or Midorigi, I don't know how it's pronounced, um, which means new green trees version of the pen. There is also a purple amethyst version oh, that okay. is, yes. <laughs> that is um, as one, as Paul from Canada put it, rare as hen's teeth. Um, <laughs> and I just coincidentally happened to find one yesterday at uh, from... Uh, Bertram's Inkwell. So I, I emailed Bert and said, hey, do you, is your website actually right? You have one of these in stock and it's really well priced. And he goes, why, as a matter of fact, yes, it is. And I said, sold. Um, so it, the purple one will be coming as soon as I get back from, uh, I'm going on a trip tomorrow. So uh, when I get back, it should be waiting for me in my P.O. box. Oh, man. I wouldn't even be able to leave. I would just be like hanging around the P.O. box. Yeah. I very seriously considered having him ship it to my hotel in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the end decided that probably wasn't the best idea, just in case yeah. it didn't get there in time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, man. That's let's awesome. see. Uh, inks. Well, paper's easy. Tomoe River, period. I that's agree all on I that. Say. So that's yeah. my answer, too. Um, and then ink, clearly, by looking at the wall behind me, answering that question will be impossible. I'll give you probably three favorite inks. Um, for for I, Mont Blanc Irish Green is like one of my favorite inks at the moment. Um, Mont Blanc Dandy Turquoise is one I just adore, but I don't, yeah. I'm afraid to use because I'm afraid if I use it, it'll go away and never come back again. Um, but it will, it will go away. Uh, yeah, it will. Cause yeah. I've only got two bottles of it and um, only two. What kind of hoarding is that? That's terrible. Well, I, I'm running out of space clearly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can get rid of the Muppets. Um, <laughs> and then I'd say probably right now, my, if I was to do a third favorite ink, it would be Mont Blanc lavender purple and mm -hmm. i just realized all three of my favorite inks are mont blanc inks right now so that's um that's kind of a no, surprise to me i don't so. think that's a bad thing okay so those are my three uh what about you guys how about you okay paper tomoy river as well i love the crinkle and i just love how fantastic it is he does not like it because he thinks it's it's not it's crinkly and stuff but um my favorite pen which i do not think ahead of time to bring with me even though I can see the case from here. Um, it is probably my uh, Namiki Yukari. It is one of the nightline with the moonlight finish. So it's uh, Rod Den. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Quick and, interjection. Um, Hello to uh, Goulet Pens for joining in and uh, oh. pros on and Parsa. Awesome. So so hello to the new new, new join-ins. So. Very exciting. Um, it's just a it's a it's a smaller pen, but it's very beautiful. I should grab it. I want you to grab it. Why don't you talk about your so, favorites while I grab it? Um, paper for me is difficult. I I am rather torn, but I I would say that Rodia is a very good all day uh, all day paper. Uh, although I use all kinds of paper, but it, if I had to pick one, I would I would probably go with that. You're not um, really insane about inks, though. So I no. And um, my what the disease I showed her in your pen. Show you her pen. It's this light does not capture it, but that's still kind of gorgeous. It, it's glittery and maybe we can we can focus. I don't know. Let me. I really like it because it's just really pretty and um, it's a nice size for me. It's really comfortable and it's just it's just really nice. I don't. I mean, it's fountain pens, right? I could also just use a preppy, but. This is way more fun. What about ink? So, way, ink, way more fun. Way more fun. Uh, for ink, I'm going to have to say Mont Blanc Irish Green, Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, definitely Dandy Turquoise, which I have a small hoard of, but also Sailor Apricot and uh, Sailor Sky High, which yeah. are, of course, half of those are not available anymore. So. Yeah, I have a bottle of, of Sailor Apricot, and I don't. I almost never use it. Like... I just it almost never gets inked, and I don't know why because I love the color. <laughs> no, is the um, 
<laughs> trying to tell me something there, Aziza? <laughs> oh, no. You can just send it along with your uh, LD. Oh, though, let, me, let me add one additional ink um, that isn't that I didn't mention that is in my favorites. It's uh, Karan Dosh, Colors of the Earth, uh, Grand Canyon, which is oh, Grand a Canyon. gorgeous brown color. I, there's not another brown on the market like it I've, that I've found anywhere. Um, I've got three bottles of it, and but it is also discontinued. Yeah. So sad. It's so I'm, upsetting. I'm tired of I'm tired of them discontinuing the inks. I'm tired of falling in love with things and then they get rid of them. Mm -hmm. so. um, let's see. We had a quick. Uh, uh, Paul asked, "Is the is abalone shell the source of the sparkles on your pen?" Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Source of the sparkles. I like how that. <laughs> I like how that's written. Yeah. That's uh, it's very accurate. Yes. Okay. What about you, Stephen? Well, my I I I find it very difficult to pick a favorite pen, but. Um, I recently picked up this. This is a Visconti, I don't know. It is a Visconti 25th anniversary thing. I don't know if you can see that there's a 25 on the finial there. Oh, yeah. There are 25 of these, um, and this is Urushi lacquered. So you can, you can see how shiny it is if I move it around like this. This is so dark. It is like, you know, like the inside of a coffin on a moonless night. <laughs> um, and that makes it very, interesting they came in uh, yellow gold rose gold and silver fin finishes this is the rose gold i find it more of a bronze but i really like it it's just a fraction smaller than opera master size making it very pleasant power filler big ink capacity and a broad nib it is palladium but it is extremely well tuned out of the box very wet very pleasant writer and i would definitely pick that um at, at least at this point and as an ink Esbiary Brown is a really nice brown, <laughs> but I, I actually am not so arrogant as to call it my favorite ink. Uh, there, um, also, we only have one bottle. Yeah, we, so. we, we have all bottles. So, so, and uh, I didn't uh, order a bottle, but someone just sent me one a couple of days ago. I, awesome. It just showed up out it, of the middle of nowhere. Thank you. That's the, that's the one person who bought the bottle. Uh, <laughs> but in, in, any, in any case, uh, I, I really agree with what's being said. It sounds... I know if it sounds very snobby that we all pick Mont Blanc inks, but I have found them to be very, very well behaved. And also the toffee brown, great shading, Irish green, great shading. So I would, I would probably, also they have sheens. Yeah, they just really well behaved. Nice so, bottles that are stackable, stackable and packable. Yeah, I so, see a nice stack well, behind you. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes, I've got the, uh, I've got. Let's see where with it here. And then you can't see them very well because they're up on. Oh, I guess you can. There's the the five here as well. So those are the limited. Oh yeah, yeah. And then those are the regular production lining. Yeah, they're really nice. Oh. And even the ones, the special ones, the 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 Leonardo is really cool. The the. Um, That's uh, a good the, rating. Yeah. Although I, mean, I will tell you, have, uh, you probably haven't tried it yet, but the new Franklin Christoph Terra Firma is Terra Firma. almost a dead ringer for <gasps> for Leonardo, which has oh, been discontinued. That's so, great because um, I really like that color. Yeah, it's, it's really very, very close. Also, I like Frank and Christoph. So, yeah, yeah well, I agree. The limited good. edition inks are so frustrating because yeah. it seems like they're the best colors. Yeah, like, yeah, and I'm sure they do that on purpose. Best yeah. colors, so it's like it's Mont Blanc. Stop it! Yeah, stop mm. it! Stop it! Do you Bad hear Mont us? Mont Blanc. <laughs> Bad. Yeah. Can we do a question? Yeah. You have the right. questions. Yeah, but I don't think my order is the same, so maybe. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Just, Matt can. Uh, we just pick one. Carry on. Grail pens. Yeah, Matt. Why don't you just do the next one? Okay. Why don't you just pick the next one? Uh, just, so yeah, I'm not doing them in order. I'm just I'm cherry picking. Um, no, so that's fine. That's fine. Tristan asked uh, the same thing. What are your Grail pens? You know, you're you're never going to get. Uh, so he, he goes on to say a beautiful pen, but crazy expensive, or so very rare you couldn't possibly ever find one in working order or it's too fragile to the touch or whatever. So why don't you guys start with that since you probably have more grail pans than I do. Yeah, well, I've, uh, I've actually gotten pretty good at not falling for pens that I can't afford or, or you know, I'm not willing to sell pens that, wait, that doesn't make sense. If I, if I really like a pen, I usually just sell off a bunch of other pens to, to fund it. But, um, at this yeah, point, I have to say that's one of the nice things about you know because I I added up my first two years worth of expenses. Always a bad idea. Pens. Terrible idea, and I was like, yeah. oh, that's where my retirement fund went. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the yeah. nice thing is now that I've done that, every time I see a new pen I want, like the purple classic pens LB5, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I end up 
going back and uh, just selling off other ones so I can buy them. Yeah. So now it's just like a perpetual cycle instead of yeah. uh, instead of you know continuing to pour all of my money into fountain pens. So yeah, but I think that no, it works well. It and works. pens, I mean, they retain some value. Clearly, they will not you will not get back. You know, yeah, the more so you find you, out what you fall in love with, yeah, you know exactly. what you can't so part it's, with. It's a good way to do it. Yeah. So anyway, what well, about your group? And well, for me, I really, really would like a Mont Blanc Hemingway, but they're not. I mean, I have seen some around, but I'm not willing to pay that much, hmm. or I'm not able to pay that much. Both willing or able. So, and it's mostly that I like the the model and I like the color, but um, I don't know. I'm. Uh, I, I'm pretty happy with what I have. I mean, look at that, the, the Yukari. Yeah. It's hard to not like that and, you know, look <laughs> that, at that other is, things. That is a pretty gorgeous pen. Yeah, so. So yeah. I have a couple of, it's interesting. I'm in a weird place right now in, in my pen collecting hobby. Um, I'm not really all that interested in acquiring a lot of, a lot more pens mm -hmm. personally. Um, I'm picking up a lot of pens. Um, for for review purposes, but I'm not picking up a lot of pens that I'm like I need to own this pen um, For a couple reasons one the price point of pens that I'm interested in has really kind of gone off the deep end um, So I'm just not willing to spend that kind of money, but also um, I will say that overall I'm a little um I, I had this kind of epiphany uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was I spent like two hours on the on a website looking at pens. I think it was eBay or something like that, looking at vintage pens. And as I was sitting there, I realized I haven't actually written a letter or written in my journal for two weeks. Um, so instead of worrying about acquiring more pens, I'm really right now focusing on using what I've got. That being said, um, <laughs> <laughs> the, so I would love to get. I don't have any true wet noodle vintage flex pens. Um, I'm not great with flex writing, but I'd like to get better. Um, I'd like to get a Waterman's Ideal Number no. 7 with mm -hmm. a pink or brown yeah. nib in it. Oh, yeah. uh, those are hard to find, and like $1,500 can be if you find a good one in good condition. I've got the, the number 7 with the red nib, which is like a medium flex nib, which I love, but I would love to try some wet noodle stuff. Mm. Um, oh, definitely. But, I, I, I can't argue yeah. with that one. Yeah. And I did order the new uh, Wall Eversharp Deco Band with the number eight super flex nib. And uh, th so that's, uh, that's one I'm, I'm going to be fun. It'll be fun to play around with. Um, and then uh, the other one that I would really like to, to look at is the... Is it the? I think it's the Mont Blanc Leo Tolstoy. Is that the one with the, like the hammered metal yeah. Yeah. around the outside? Yeah. So I think that's that one to me looks. I, I love the look of that. Uh, most I find yeah, that Mont, most cool. Mont Blanc pens cool. to be kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, before we get to you, Stephen, we had a mm -hmm. quick question from uh, Andy on the chat. He said, "What are good ways for people who have got computer-based jobs to have opportunities to use their pens?" So oh, um, that's a good one. Uh, I don't know if you do a lot of computer-based work um, at, at your job, Stephen. I know I certainly do, but what are your thoughts? I, I um, Yeah, I do a lot of computer-based work, but I, I, I do find myself using pens uh, on a daily basis at work. And the reason is I, I, I do write a lot. I keep notes of a lot of things that I do. Uh, say, for example, writing in a lab journal or... Uh, just, just taking notes of something that I'm reading, uh, but even sometimes uh, it, it, it happens that I have to program something and sometimes I just need to think out what an algorithm will look like and I really prefer doing that on paper, where I just quickly scribble and, and point and, and underline etc. things. Um, than doing it on a computer screen. So I, I, I yeah, I, I would definitely say that I spend, well, add it all up, an hour and a half writing a day. So that yeah, I think there are there are opportunities. I was even once uh, a person once sent me an email explaining that he now does. Um, he had a name for that, and I forgot. But he he just writes out his emails by hand, then scans them, and then sends them to people. Steph and just so, said the ink runs down the screen too much. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It doesn't, it doesn't work that well. Well, actually, at some point, I, this may be just an extremely short but fun anecdote. At some point, a colleague and I had to mark. MRI scans, and I actually use Noodler's Blue Arrays, 
with a preppy to draw on my screen and then mm -hmm. wipe it out again to indicate where specific areas were. So nice. actually, Steph, it does happen. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, uh, I, I work in the, the tech industry. So I work on uh, in software and web development. Um, I'm, I'm a program manager, so I don't actually do the coding because I'm not that smart. Um, I just I tell other people what to do. Um, but I more fun. Yeah, it gets, gets better money anyway. Yeah. Um, so I use pens every day as well. I keep a notebook at my desk. You, it's a Rhodia notebook. And I actually journal everything I do. I also keep my to-do list on paper because I find I get it done. It's so much more satisfying to check off a box on a paper to-do list than it is to check off a box in a task list on a computer screen. Um, I And if you go to a lot of meetings, fountain pens will save your life because you can play with your pens during the meeting right. instead of paying attention but it looks like you're paying attention like unlike you're thinking when, really hard yeah unlike when people bring their laptops to meetings and spend the whole time doing other things it looks like you're paying attention but you don't have to so oh, that's, that's um and then uh because you've done some design work haven't you aziza as well am i remembering that correctly or am i confusing you with someone else okay I'm my own designs, else. but not 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 okay no I wish. <clears throat> I wish. Yeah. But uh, I mean, and for me, I don't have a well. Actually, no, it's not true. All of my my income is computer based. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, for like personally, I, I write letters, but I also uh, like my blog. I draft all my blog posts by hand. So if I'm reviewing a pen, of course, I draft the whole review with that pen, and you get a good experience with it. But I also do long test runs with pens and sometimes i just uh this sounds really lame but i go through my learn dutch in three months book and just write words i have not yet learned dutch in three months but um <laughs> it's you no know, but i mean it is a way to to, to get right. to use your pens and your inks and, and also do something efficient for me anyway um, <laughs> Paul writes, you know. my constant writing of the quick brown fox with my pens gives me away at meetings. <laughs> that's always good. Oh, you got you to switch it up a little bit, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so back to the grail pens question then, Stephen. What, uh... Well, I, 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 a while ago, I acquired a, I um, don't have it right here, but I, I, I acquired a, a Tobacco Opera Master, which is a pen that I have been eyeing pretty much since 2011, and I only got it in 2015, and for me, that was a, a grail pen, because I, I'd been wanting to get it so long, but it was a limited edition, I couldn't find it anywhere, but that's something I already obtained. Now, if I were to talk about a pen that I would like to, in theory, own, then in theory, I wouldn't mind owning a Mont Blanc Leonardo, but that's a, I think even the regular edition is over 3,000 euros, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, and I don't know why that pen appeals to me so much, but I, I see it in stores occasionally, and it's very odd with a little cog wheel on the clip. It's a bit steampunkish. A lot of, it, it, I, I think it just looks cool. It doesn't even look like the most comfortable pen to use, but for some reason, I just it just appeals to me, which is very odd. So that might be a, a grill pen that I'm probably not going to own, but that I just like looking. You would just take it apart. Oh, little yeah. cogwheel. And then just yeah. Yeah. The air and yeah. You know. Um, Parsa asks Stephen, how many opera masters do you own? Um, well, I'm trying. I I I have. I'm not sure that's one. a question that should be answered. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> well. There's the clear one, the tobacco one, the crimson tide, the honey cream. Wow, the honey cream is mine. So you yeah, can just you so can not count that not maybe so that people don't judge you. Five? Yeah, maybe five. I think five. And there was a there was a black Yoshi one. I didn't like that one so much, so that one's being sold. It's too many. Oh, and then there's a Rushi one I showed you. So But yeah. I don't yeah. That's not officially a master, so it's just a master. This is not a question so. that is safe to answer. <laughs> it's quite a lot. Uh, and, and then Steph asked what's your Grail vintage pen? Mine would be the Waterman Ideal Seven with the, the pink nib as I mentioned. I also would like to get the largest possible um, duo fold with yeah. in yeah. in like I don't really care what color. I like the silver. I have a blue duo fold, but it's um, it's smaller, and uh, and with the flexiest, wet noodliest nib you can find. Because um, mm -hmm. uh, I just I, I love vintage the vintage flex nibs. So it's all about wet noodles, honestly. <laughs> you just yeah. want to say wet noodles. 
I would also really like to get a hold of a flexible music nib. I don't have any of those. So, and, uh, and I have, Aziza has some, some nib porn up on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those of her, her Waterman 94 that, um, you know, fill me with impure thoughts. So yeah. <laughs> for the nib, for a vintage band. Yes, for the nib. Yeah. Be clear. <laughs> I, we don't need to start any more rumors about tension between the three of us. <laughs> uh, there was, there is that, and and Steph probably knows which one I'm talking about. So Steph, help me out here because I forgot. I think there is this huge Waterman. The that's 20S. really big. The twenty S. Isn't that it? I, I really don't. Oh know. no no, that's a prohibition it's really class big. one, right? It's really it's 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 huge. Yeah. And I, I once saw one and I nearly bought one at a pen show, but the guy said, No, no, don't buy it, it's a fake. I just happen to have it. I should I should not be saying I just have it here. But it's it's really big. It's 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 enormous. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a colossal. Here's a here's the park a jewel fold, and I think that pen is something like this. It's yeah. it's colossal and really thick. And I don't know what it is, but anyway, that that I would like I mean it's it's extremely expensive because it's so big, but I just find it fun because it's it's like 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 is a it small paper. That's pro I mean, I don't even know what, what, That's what it's, it's possible it's a safety. Yeah. I honestly yeah. don't even know. So you see how, how He's not really a vintage are. guy. But yeah, that, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. We like we like vintage because we have yeah, like, good taste and stuff. So. I remember making <laughs> stuff and so I like vintage. I you know, I like vintage, but if if you give me the choice, I'm almost always going to go modern. Uh, I I just I love I love modern pens, especially modern Italian pens. Um, yeah. yeah. Along those lines, TJ tough. asked, um, "Have you had the chance to use Montegrappa pens and your thoughts on them?" Uh, I've only used a couple. I did not. My biggest complaint with Montegrappa pens is that they use metal sections with metal threads, uh, and their threads are big, chunky threads generally. Mm. So they, um, I hold my pens really. You know, I can I can show you here, but I don't hold my pens down here. When mm -hmm. I write, I hold them up here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm almost always on the threads of my pens, and their pens are very uncomfortable for me to hold. Um, nibs tend to run very narrow and very dry out of the box yeah. for me. That's been my experience. I think they've got gorgeous materials. Some of their pens are a little redonkulous. I mean, they're, they're almost, lit in some cases, literally cartoony. Um, you know, the, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. the, the superhero pens or the, yeah. the dollar sign pens, that sort of thing. So what about you guys? My, my experience was, uh, I can only say I've used one uh, Monte Grapp, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've only used one, so I should be a little careful generalizing. However, it's interesting that you said that the nibs run fine and dry, because that was exactly my idea. I used the es Espressione. And That's that the one, one I was, tried too. That's one yeah, of the ones it's, it's, it's nice. It's mm -hmm. nice looking. It has the octagon or hexagon or whatever it was, sort of bolt shaped thing. It, it, I, I there was nothing wrong with the looks. But Beautiful the material was, too. Yeah, it's it's great. It was a deep blue, but the nib was supposed to be medium and wrote like a fine, and it was very dry. Yeah. Yeah, I so, haven't used them. Mm -hmm. I so, I would like to try more of them. I you know there but there's some of them. The ones that I'm interested in are really really expensive, yeah. and because I haven't had like choir from the heavens experiences with yeah. any of the the, the middle tier pe Montegrappa pens, which there really are no low end Montegrappas. Yeah. Um, I'm a little hesitant to spend that kind of money on the high end pens. Yeah. I'd really want to try them a mm -hmm. lot first before I bought them, um, yeah. so, which is one of the reasons why I, I really haven't at this point, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, do you guys have a yeah, question? Where um, one thing I should explain as Aziza is pulling up the, um, the the questions. If we look kind of odd, that's this. We're not looking like this because we're bored. But my laptop is right there. I'm looking at it right now, <laughs> and our webcam is right there because it's on a tripod. So it's not like we're bored and sort of drifting like this. It's just not like the mice running around here. It's not the case. But it's just uh, you know. Uh, and I'm using the webcam on my laptop is is right in front of me, but I'm looking at the the questions on my iPad <laughs> yeah, over here to the left. So. And actually, we actually we're doing this once in a while. No, it's actually. No. Here. <laughs> um, well, an interesting one about um, pen meets and stuff. Um, are any of us active in local pen meets or gatherings? Well, um, and do they happen frequently? Do we actively participate? What happens? Well, I mean, we can quite easily summarize that we don't really have local pen meets. And 
I think that's pretty much it. However, <laughs> we do have friends who do like friends. fountain pens. Yeah. Now, yeah, I didn't say we have friends. Of course, we have friends, but we also have friends. Well, who I don't like know about you, friends. but no. well, But in any case, these people, we either go there for dinner or they come here for dinner. Uh, we meet them or we meet them in town at a you know Starbucks or something. Um, and um, so it's not official pens. It's not official, but we bring some pens. They bring some pens. We play around. We do. We cover stuff. each other's pens. Um, we touch each other's pens. So it, it, I mean, it may not be formalized, <laughs> but I do think that you could you could you know spend time with people who like pens as a pen meet. There's, mm -hmm. there's more than you know if you touch it Actually, more than once. It's one of one around. of our friends I was pen pals with before I moved here, which is hilarious. And then we uh, we met up at the pen show last year in so, Tulu. Yeah. And they turned out to live a street. And they, they literally there. live like like two minutes away from us, which is so, so funny. So Yeah, so that's um, a me. What about you? Um so I First of all, I don't have any friends, so meeting friends and talking about pens is not really an option. Um, <laughs> not, not any real life friends, anyway. I, I don't like people. Um, the no, but the uh, the uh, um, what I there is a Seattle pen club, but it's about an hour and fifteen minute drive to get there, and it's a th the third Saturday of every month. So I've been once. I keep meaning to go, but Saturdays, you know, my weekends are so precious to me and I'm usually so yeah. far behind on getting pen blog video and videos ready that I just don't have time. I think now that I don't have to mow my lawn every Saturday like I do during the summer. You can just um, throw bleach on it during the summer. <laughs> yeah. Well, know. this summer it was it was a drought. So it, you know, oh, you I go. didn't I didn't have to mow that much, but um uh, but even still, it's a little far for a pen meet for me. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, it's a bit of a drive. I've been thinking of starting a South Seattle pen club because I know there are several folks within a like a thirty minute radius of where I live that would meet up. Um, and I did go to the Pelican Hub when that happened last month um, in Seattle, which was fun. Um, but I don't, I don't get a chance to talk with a lot of people about pens outside of Periscope and. Hangouts and emails and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter that and like Instagram. A lot of pens, and, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get a, to, to be real honest. I don't want to talk about pens any more than I already do. I, I'm I get yeah. burned out real fast, and so yeah. after after spending all day long on YouTube or answering comments or emails or stuff, sometimes I just want to go home and play a video game and not think about pens anymore so i think that's fairly valid i think it makes sense and this this is not at all supposed to be some type of negative comment but i i i think not everyone realizes how much time goes into doing fountain pen reviews because it's not just you know an 11 minute review is not 11 minutes of work it is an hour or more hours of work to to shoot it edit it prepare for it yeah uh, well you get penned out mm -hmm. exactly. so i i do understand yeah. what you're what you're yeah. saying yeah the good yeah, news I, though that I Steph average said that he will be a friend. So you, you oh, have yeah. a friend, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Steph. That's um, a pretty awesome friend. So yeah, and uh, you know, I I spend if you count just prepping a video and recording it and editing it and writing the blog post, it's between ten and fifteen hours worth of work to do one fifteen to twenty minute video. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I'm I, maybe at the end here. I'll do a quick tour of the. Um, I'll you know, I'll turn my laptop around and show you the room I'm in. Mm -hmm. But getting everything set up, I've got three cameras, lighting, um, sound, getting all that set up, recording, copying the file. It, it, I mean, it takes a ton. You are of a patient time. man because that is a lot of work. Well, this is what happens when you don't have a life or friends. You stay at home and do things. Look, like I don't this. have a life or friends really <laughs> either, and I'm not that patient. No, but I think no, but no, but what, I mean, first of all, of course, we're not complaining because we like no, doing this. Otherwise, we're not doing it. So, so no one, no one should now think, oh my God, they're gonna, they're gonna kill themselves because they can't handle it. No, we can't handle it. We do it because we like it. But yeah, the, there's time involved, and I do think what this. This pays back in in your case because your your videos have an extremely high production value, are very well produced, are very well lit, sound is great, everything is great. So the the result is also very impressive. So I can see how you. I, I don't spend fifteen hours in one on one review, but it also doesn't look like I spent. You, yeah, you, well, you also reviews, do so. four times more videos than I do. So, yeah, that's I mean, you, you put them out all, and you don't stop yeah. because, like, I took a four yeah. or five month break, so. I'm like a machine. It's, it's just different, different methods, different styles. So it's all good. Yeah, exactly. The but variety, anyway, that's cool. The variety is good. Because yeah, it's good. It's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Do, you, uh, do we have another question? Do you want to do another question, Matt? Sure. Um, <laughs> another one from Tristan. 
Uh, Stephen, you've already got this covered, but uh, for Aziza and I, if we could create an ink color, what would it be? Um, so, Aziza, what are what would I your ink color be? Well, that's tough. <laughs> I, the, the ink color I think I would create is already created, and that is probably Yamabudo, mm. the pilot uh, Iroshizuku. Um, nice yeah, I mean, it's not too pink. I mean, I know my blog is pink, but I, I also know that realistically, most people don't want to use pink ink all the time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, speaking of pink ink, I have a bottle of uh, uh, Karen Dash Colors of the Earth Sunset that I should send to you because I will never, ever You use could just it. send it along with that LB5. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a good home, you know. <laughs> and I'll, I'll send you her music net. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I didn't agree to this. No, but that's probably the color I would do. I mean, I I, turn on an extra light here. Go I'm not as interesting as Stephen is to, or, or or you are to uh, to have my own ink, but I'm, I mean I'm more like blog based. But um, I think oh I thought I had turned that on. Oh my god, I'm just no, really really stupid. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah, I I think I would again look at the look at the wall behind me. I've got almost every variety. I mean, there's not a lot new in ink these days. Uh, so for me, it wouldn't be like, let's come up with a tiny, slightly different shade of another color that's out there. I can find almost any shade in any color with any property I want because there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of inks. Yeah, so for me, true. it would be recreating the one ink I cannot get mm, even yeah. close to, and that would be Karadash Grand Canyon. Um, I just have never found another ink that's yeah. even close to the way that ink writes, the way it looks, the way it shades, the the, the color of brown. It's almost a gray brown. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, instead of, you know, a lot of browns tend to, excuse me, I've been drinking a lot of tea, uh, tends to be a little um, reddish or orangish or mm -hmm. even green. In, in the case of the toffee brown, has a little bit mm -hmm. of green in it. Mm -hmm. um, this is like gray brown, and I've never seen anything I'm quite sorry. like it before. I've not used that I've one. Used that I'll, um, I know the place where I have it, so I'm going to grab a bottle. And, no, uh, have well, if, if they have more than one bottle, grab me a couple extra, and yeah? I'll take them, ship them to me. Because... All right, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, it's like a pen me. Exactly. Sort of, anyway. um, Ashish asked, do you guys feel sad for the pens you don't use as much as you use others? I feel bad for some of the others. I feel kind of bad for the, for some of the others. So, um, yes, a little bit. Um, I don't anthropomorphize my pens too much, but I will tell you that once I, like, this this pen, for instance, is um, an Omas uh, Noti di Bologna in, they say blue and orange. It's, it's black, but I don't know why they call it blue. Um, I love this pen. One of the best nibs on any of my pens. I mean, it is slicker than butter on glass. I never use this pen. I love it. I just never use it. And so when I get to that point, it's like, it's time to, it's time to let the pen go to a home. This is another one. This uh, Conway Stewart 50, uh, I think, what is this? The 24, Conway Stewart 24 from the 50s. Green hatch, gorgeous material. The smoothest oblique broad nib I have ever used. Um, just a gorgeous pen. And I never ink it because it's a little too small. Mm. Um, trying to think. Here's another one, the Crone. Uh, continuum atmosphere, which is just another gorgeous pen, That's writes really, really well. Um, I just don't ink it up. It's not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just mm -hmm. there's other pens I happen to like a little more. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah. what about you guys? I mean, I, I know you guys, between, especially between yeah, the two of you. Like yeah, I have something like that too. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know between the two of you, you guys have got like ten times more pens than I do. No, no, really. We, um, I don't feel sad for my pens because I, I don't really attach emotions to them in that I don't name them, which I actually think answers another question. So I don't <laughs> name them or anything. But, um, I, uh, to me, I, I try to think of it, um, in a completely relatively, okay, relatively practical point of view because I understand I could just use one pen and that's it. But, um, I've, I've also moved a lot, so I've had to, like downsize a lot and I keep thinking to myself okay look if something happened and I had to get out what pens would I grab and um the pens that I'm not madly in love with I don't feel sorry for but I'm like 
they're going somewhere else. Either I'll give them away or, um, or I'll sell them if they're, you know, extremely valuable or something. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't feel sad for them. I just think that someone else can give them a better home. I agree. I, 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 um, I think Aziza and I are down to what forty pens or maybe fifty pens. I think oh about fifty. Do I actually have more pens than you guys? I think I think that's you very definitely possible. at this point might yeah. And the, the, the reason is <laughs> your face is, is is priceless. No, I don't know. Yes. It could be excitement too. Right? No, it is excitement. Uh, you know, uh, the thing is, I I I used to I think about two years ago I was approaching three hundred pens, and I know there are people who have way more pens, so that's not even that special, but. Um, someone came along, and um, uh, I won't mention who. Yeah, but now he was going to think I made you sell them all. No, no, no. So let me explain <laughs> this. Aziza did not at all make me sell them all, make me do anything. But she she asked a very relevant question, which is, Stephen, if you don't use these pens, why do you have them? And uh, there is only one answer to that. You are also not a collector, so it's not like you collect them. No, it's not like a it's collection. a part of 51 in every color. That's a collection. That makes sense. But if it's just a random Chinese pen here and a Visconti there and a Delta, I mean, if you don't use them, I, I completely agree with Ziza, then you should sell them or give them away or do anything with because it, it doesn't make sense to, to hoard pens that you Unless don't use. Unless you're a collector. Or, yeah, and that's you, or you have a very specific I'm, quality. I'm not, I'm not telling any people what, what they no, should no, do. No, no, no. But, but in just, my case, you know, that was a very liberating feeling because now I have... You know, I have a four pen pouch that goes to work every day, and there are a few pens in there that are always in there. Someone says I'm right. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> and then there is one, maybe one pen that rotates a bit, and that's it. And I'm very happy with that. I don't, I don't really need, there were so many pens that I had and that I just never used. Yeah. Get rid of them. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I Someone asked me, going back to the spending so much money, I look at my pen collection as a savings account. Not as an investment account. I do want to clarify that, but as a savings mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. Because the, a lot of these pens are not going to, they'll lose a little bit of value, but they're not going to yeah. lose very much value, especially right. because I am really, really, really careful with my pens. I'm not hard on them at all. Uh, yeah. So if worse comes to worst and I need to liquidate my pens to fix a hole in my roof or something like that, there, there will be a few I keep, and the rest will go. I'll be sad about it, but it's not the end of the world. And if worse comes to worse, I can always get them back. Right. So, um, yes, do I have an emergency fund, both physical, the physical emergency <laughs> fund, and the uh, and the uh, you know the bank account emergency fund? So, yeah, well, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea because you get to enjoy the physical fund, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> yeah, D uh, mm -hmm. Dante Del Vecchio from Visconti said in the 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 periscope he did with Google mm -hmm. pens. I, I used to have a collection. Now I don't. I have them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Makes sense. Makes sense. I wouldn't mind being that either. Um, yeah. Andy asked, are there any pens you have where you love the style and looks, but can't stand to write with? This is how I feel about my Faber Castell ambition. Um, I'm trying to think any that I have that I can't stand to write with. I, I do agree on the ambition. It's, it's so cute and it, yeah, it, it's a beautiful pen with a great. But nib. they're really it's, not comfortable. It's but that that solid cylinder. That that's this yeah. the solid cylindrical thing. For me, it's um, Andy. It's it's the size. Small pens. There are a lot of small pens I love the look of. I just can't use because they don't fit my hand. So a perfect example is I don't know if you've ever seen these. The Delta Vintage. No, oh, wait, got to make me the broadcaster here. The Delta Vintage, gorgeous material, wonderful nib, um, just a beautiful pen. Um, can't use it. It's too small. Same thing with the um, uh, with the Conway Stewart's. You know, the, a lot of these vintage pens, I have a little... Um, yeah. Where is that? Oh, here it is. I've got pens all over the place in here because I'm recording a bunch of videos. This cute little Waterman 52 and a half V. Oh, I love It's got it. a, it's so a beautiful semi-flex nib in it. It's in wonderful condition. Uh, a viewer, Chris, sent that to me a while back, and it's just a great pen. I just can't use it, which... Yeah, yeah. That's really sad, though. Yeah, I know. What about you guys? Yeah, for me, it's the same yeah. thing. For me, it's the yeah. same, same thing. Size. I, I, I like. Is size an like issue for you? Yeah, yeah. I. Um, <laughs> size I couldn't pass that up, right? Yeah. Size. It, it, it doesn't That's matter. True. And the the thing is, I, I, I do like a lot of vintage pens too. Um, but I agree with you. A lot of them I can't use because they're so small. 
I just can't use them, even though they have the, the greatest, most superior flex nibs on them you could possibly find. It's not working, mm -hmm. and it's, it's sad but true. Well, and it's it's interesting because you know, I someone contacted me and said, "I think you're being a little ridiculous about pen size because um, you can learn." I mean, everyone wrote with pens back then, and I can't imagine that 50 years ago our hands were smaller. It's uh, and and you can train yourself to write with that. And I'm like, yeah, I could, but. But I don't want yeah, to. But you don't have to, though. Why should if I? There I, are pens I, available I that fit it's a you. preference thing. It's like, yeah. yeah, I can write with them. Do I like to? Not as much. Um, so I, I have to show you this pen because this just came in the mail yesterday. So right. I wanted to do a little size comparison. Waterman okay. 52 and a half V. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and just size. So size you can just put size. that in the barrel there, pretty much. Here's the Mont Blanc 149. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, wow. Pen. Yeah, this is a baseball bat. Anyway, that's I just nice. that was that was kind of fun. I that came yeah, that's a pretty that good one. much larger than I was expecting it. To be. <laughs> what, what was that again? What was that again? Uh, I think it was a gamma. Um, oh, oh yeah, pens. Pens. Yeah, they, yeah, they make really really big. I mean, it it's mm. really nice olive. Um, Olive ebonite, which I really like quite a yeah. bit. I haven't I haven't even inked it up yet. It's probably going to be toward the end of the season. So, oh yeah, this you've got a, the what is that? The speakeasy Visconti uh, speakeasy speak versus a Parker Jewel full centennial. It's also so, a baseball bat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's also. So, uh, well, that's, that's the one that's the the, um, the flask. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that, that's bad enough in itself. That's, oh my god! But. Like you that's need another that. way you can use your pens at work. Yeah, there exactly. You go. exactly. You need to, you it's can like, just... oh, I'm using this pen a lot today. No, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, it's just an energy drink. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't mind me. Don't mind. I don't really have that problem that uh, pens are too small. I mean, unless it's like a, a micro pen, mm -hmm. but those are well, not really. What, what you should do just for fun to illustrate the point is just hold this pen. Yeah, up. I mean, but even large pens, even if they're they're large, I. I can I, I find a way to use them for what works for me. So I get a nib on them that um, that is suitable for the amount of writing I can do with it. If that makes sense. That's the actual set of the mission. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I guess I'm lucky in that regard to not have that issue. I mean, my hands are not really that mm. giant. So most pens work for me unless it's like a, a really really absurd pen. Well, what can you not use? Because I don't think I've ever seen you. Hold the pen, and then you said, "Oh, I can't use it." No, and the nice thing is that you don't have to post it, so yeah. you know it works out. Works out nicely. And you can pretty much use it, call it you a dinky and post it. So, yes, this is true. So. Uh, Steph asked, "What are your thoughts on cross pens?" So I've got a. I, I used my first cross pen this uh, just a couple weeks ago. I got it from Gold Spot Pens for review, and uh, I got the Century Two, mm -hmm. um, the blue and sterling one here mm -hmm. um so my thought is the nib was spectacular nice and mm -hmm. bouncy and smooth and wet my problem with every cross pen i've picked up which hasn't been very many is they are all too freaking skinny yeah they're, they're very slender they seem to have just decided we're going to do skinny pens and mm -hmm. you know for someone who likes uh i think the the grip on that was eight millimeters it was like super <laughs> narrow uh, yeah. and for someone who likes you know 10 11 12 millimeter grips yeah it was just too narrow yeah. great writer though absolutely spectacular writer yeah what was the one we had with the, with the ice the, the apogee is that the apogee the apogee um, the apogee is a little bigger i think yeah um that, that's I think they have, they're very attractive. They make really nice finishes. Yeah, that one. Is one. Um, very, very sleek and pretty. But um, I've had mixed experiences with the nibs. Some were dry, need tuning, and other ones were fantastic. I, I've yeah. used the Century Two um, as well, just the black one, and the nib was really great on it. And um, a couple others I have used. With the Apogee was dry, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, I think a, a classic Century. Which is super thin. Yeah. I mean, you would hate it, but uh, yeah, the nib like was also pencil. very dry. It's pretty much like holding a pencil. Yeah, it's very, very thin. Once they're tuned, they write well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, of course, it's the case with any pen. But um, uh, I, even for me, I find them slender. It's not an issue for me, but I can see for you guys yeah. that would yeah. be an issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, like the very smooth nibs, the ones I've used. Cross a while ago, Cross sent me a bunch to review, and the, the Apogee was, I think, I, I don't even recall which one. I also purchased a few. There's also the ATX, which I used. Um, 
very nice, nice nibs, but indeed, quite a few of those nibs were very dry out of the box, hmm. but very smooth, but yeah. very dry. So, I, I would like to try the Townsend. That's the one I haven't tried. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just uh, that's. Uh, I need to try try it in person. That's one I want to look at at a show instead that's of buying outright because it's, that it's one pretty feels expensive. Good, though. It's a, it's yeah. a it has a nice weight. It's a nice around. one, but that's also pretty thin. Yeah. 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 Um, so really quickly, Federico uh, asked, can you recommend any pens around $200? So uh, I will tell you some of my favorite pens in that range. Uh, this, these question, We get questions like this a lot. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's always hard to answer because we don't know what it is you value in a yeah. pen. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you pens that I almost always recommend, Platinum 3776, yeah. uh, okay. especially the ones in, like, I, the Chartres Blue is my, I think it's That's a gorgeous a material. Finish. Yeah. I would pick that, like, uh, the black is just very plain and mm -hmm. not exciting. But the, the blue and even the, the, the Burgoyne. Burgoyne is beautiful. Yeah. So those, those two, um, anything by Pilot will be a wonderful writer. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, anything by Sailor will be a wonderful writer, but if I had to pick two companies in that price range to buy from, it would be Franklin Christoph mm -hmm. and Edison. Um, I think those two, you're going to get wonderful pens. I like the Franklin Christoph's nibs, especially the, the Masayama ground nibs. Um, so, uh, and because you can get Masayama stubs or uh, italic nibs, I think you know, that's their nibs are really great, but in terms of pen body, either one is really well made. So, um, yeah, and yeah, I agree. You now, before you continue, Friendly Rico is actually looking for a double broad or roughly one millimeter line width in these pens. So, I mean, Frank well, and Kristoff definitely yeah. because they have the, the music nib. And Edison, Edison has 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.5. Yeah. So, those would options. be good options. Those are good options. Yeah. I was going to say uh, maybe Lamy 2000. That's not for everyone, but it's a piston filler. It has but, a but gold But those nib. are not double broad. But those. In oh no, you can get double broad. I used to. At least you can. You can in Europe. You can get a, I believe, double broad, oblique double broad. So. Oh, um, I have an oblique broad. They're they're these pens, but they're very modern, very yeah. designy. That's not for everyone, but you will get a reliable writer. I've never seen 2000. It doesn't work. If you're looking, an interesting one is is it's a little bit over 200, but look at the Sailor nib. The, get one of the Zoom nibs because yeah, you can cool. really you can go from fine to wide on the same nib. Um, and I have a Zoom nib that I drop nib first on the ground um, and bend this all the hell. This happens to you a lot, doesn't it? No. <laughs> well, it's the same one. It's I. I've oh, it's the same one. Okay. Times. But um, I had Mike Masayama grind it into a cursive italic, and it's one of my favorite nibs now. So, and it's about a millimeter in width. Awesome. So, um, that's another thing is is look at getting a, a broad or a double broad and have it ground to what you want. Um, yeah, that's always lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. always good because then you're you're absolutely certain that your nib is going to write perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfectly. Definitely. Um, okay. There's a daily carry question here. Yes. Uh, do we have a set system for daily carries, and do we buy pens with that system in mind? I do not have a set system for my daily carry. I also do not buy pens with that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, yeah. uh, so I will tell you, um, my daily carry is whatever I'm in the mood to, ha to carry with me and have inked up at the moment. And I usually have about 20 pens inked simultaneously, so... Um, I try to keep the same, I, I use a Knockco three pen case, mm -hmm. and I try to use the same three pens all week at work. Um, just because I want to actually empty one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the goal is to empty at least one pen a week. Uh, the, uh, in terms of do I buy pens with the system in mind, not even a little bit. That's like, yeah. uh, my, my method of buying pens is, ooh, pretty. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's basically my only criteria for buying pens at this point. Oh, so, enough. ooh, pretty, and will this bankrupt me? So, <laughs> no, that's about it for me. And the second yeah. one doesn't necessarily eliminate. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am. Um, I, I don't really. I definitely don't buy pens with that. I, I have um, my system is basically that I carry this, uh, and it has changed a bit um, for a few months. But I keep coming back to this pouch. It's an old, uh, older uh, um, a pouch by a company called Film Spec in, in the Netherlands. Uh, the only reason I say that is that otherwise a million people are going to ask us afterwards. They make four pen pouch that's really nice. It's all leather. It's 
good leather. And in there, I, I this is not necessarily the lineup that's always in there. Uh, but right now there is a Parker Jewel fold with a stub nib. It's always fun to have a stub nib with you because it just adds a bit of character to your handwriting. If you have to write a, a quick note at work to someone or whatever, I think that's nice. I always try to carry something with a broad nib just because I like broad nibs. In this case, that would be the Visconti that Urushi I've shown you earlier. Wow, I do not put this much work into my daily carry. No, I, I, I do. I, I think about it. One thing I always carry is something with a fine nib. I don't have that many fine nibs. This is an, an Omas uh, Arte Italiana Paragon. The Arco celluloid with a fine nib. This is one of the greatest fine nibs I have ever used. It's ultra smooth. This is from a guy who does not like fine. I know. So you know so it must that's, be good. Yeah, this is, this is exceptional. You've got to have something to use on crappy paper. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You yeah. have to have something. And I, something usually, I do usually like carry smooth. like my uh, 3776, but mm -hmm. I put like an iron gall ink in there so I can oh. use it on crappy paper. So yeah, I try to keep something yeah. like that in there too. That's a good point. It's yeah. always useful. And then I have a fun pen. In this case, it's a Visconti Titanic. Those are limited editions just for, just for fun. And then and that, that one pen pouch that's just a speakeasy. Just, you know. Because it doesn't fit in anything else. Yeah, and sometimes, <laughs> you know, if you want to leave an impression, you swing around a big pen and then do the press. So, and that's, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, well, um, it leaves an impression, all right. Yeah. yeah. Knock out. It's one or the other. Um, so let me ask, uh, let me read this question. This comes from G. Christopher Lynn. Uh, when you're smoothing nibs, is mylar paper necessary, or is the 12,000 micromesh grit good enough for the final polish? So I will tell you what I do. Um, I almost never use mylar paper uh, because I find I get kind of a squeaky quality um, or a, a singing quality if I polish with mylar paper. I actually find I get a smoother experience if I fit, if I end on the 12,000 grit micromesh. Um, I know a lot of people, I think the reason mylar paper gets talked about a lot is because it is far less, you're far less likely to over polish your nibs mm -hmm. with that paper than you are with any of the micro meshes. Um, but once you know what you like and if you test it often, I'm, I usually stop at 12,000 and leave it at that. So I don't know what you guys do when you smooth your nibs. Same thing. I, I have two sheets of mylar paper, uh, which I bought a long time ago from Richard Binder. And they have seen almost no use. I use 12,000 grit micro mesh a lot, both on pads and on buffing sticks. Hmm. Never had issues with it. Yeah. And I know that probably if you are talking to a nib meister, then I could see how they would say, no, yeah, I should also use the, the mylar sheets. But for example, you talk about Mike Maziyama. I don't think I've seen him use that. Mm -hmm. I know. So I, 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 even if, I mean, for me personally, never use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It. Same thing. Yeah. I don't have, I don't I don't smooth my nibs. You just make him do it. Someone else. Does. <laughs> yeah, I um I think the thing that's different a lot, a lot of people start with the 12,000 with me. I almost always start with 2400 and work my way down to 12,000 cuz I I have the the set of pads or the set of kind of the rubberized fabric sheets which I find I like more than the the foam pads. Those yeah, rubberized yeah. sheets are really great um and work really well. So that's normally what I do, but anyway. Um, well, we're getting close to the end of the hour. I mean, we can go over a little bit. There's no uh, end range here, but um, Aziza, what's your favorite pen in Stephen's collection? And Stephen, the same question to you about Aziza's. My favorite pen was the Visconti Opera Master, the, the, the clear one. It has like the blue and green swirls in it, and it had a double broad nib. And um, now it's in my collection, so... <laughs> Not because it was stolen, no, but because I gave it to people. People said, oh, she takes all your pen. Yeah. No, she doesn't take all my pen. Well, but you have your tobacco. So. Yeah, exactly. I have tobacco. I'm very happy with that. Uh, in your collection, um, one pen that I think is very nice is the uh, Moonlight Moon Pearl. The Moon Pearl. Moon Pearl. Moon Pearl. Yeah, I always forget. Well, it's, it's a very solid, pearl. heavy pen. Yeah, that's a really, it's, it's basically 146 size pen, but with the, the, the abalone sheets on it, and it's just, it's gorgeous and it's very robust, very nice pen. And a pen that is surprisingly unisex, I think. For men, it's very rugged. For women, it has the nice rod on it. It uh, doesn't matter anyway, but I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very but we cool. share pens. Yeah, we share pens. So. Yeah, just, we just wash yeah. our hands out. <laughs> <laughs> All my pens just come with a, a warning: do not drop this pen. <laughs> yeah. you know, that's pretty much it. So, mm -hmm. okay, so um, I think to wrap up question wise, uh, this is actually a really good question to to wrap up with. I think Scott writes: How do you maintain your interest in the hobby? 
Have you ever, ever asked yourself, what am I doing spending all of this money on stuff and then think about selling everything off? The second question is from my wife who thinks I'll wake up one day and decide it's all been fun, but it must go. So, <laughs> so how, <laughs> how, how do you, yeah. <laughs> how do you guys maintain your interest in the hobby? I, I find it took me a few years, uh, but I found out what I like, what I really like and what I look for in a pen. And that makes it easy to decide for or against buying something because you know that, well, maybe it looks very shiny in the store, but you, when you realistically think about it, you know it is not the right size or shape or nib type or whatever uh, preferences you may have. Uh, and then you end up with a set of pens that you really like, that are a joy to use, that are tuned to your preference, either by yourself or in a store or by a nibmeister, and those you use. And then whenever you use them, they're a lot of fun. And that doesn't mean you, you cannot buy more more pens or new pens, but quite often I, I, I see new pens coming out and I think, yeah, I know it's a nice object, but I don't want it because it's it's, it's not ticking enough boxers for me and that for me keeps things very lively because whenever I pick a pen from my pouch it's what I want and then I'm automatically enthusiastic mm -hmm. hmm. that's a good answer isn't it <laughs> well there's that uh, knowing what you like and, and having having what you like is is good because then you you want to use them more and the more you use them the more I think hopefully the more enjoyment you get out of them whether you're writing letters or uh, writing your thesis, I don't know, that's that's torture in itself. Um, it, it's fun to have some inks to pick from because it makes, you know, choosing a color fun and um, also paper. Paper is important. And I mean, if you if you journal, having a variety of journals is good, but I, 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 I spend a lot of time, uh, I guess, trying to guide people who are in their newer stages, which is where I was several years ago. Google pens. <sighs> That's it. Like trying to, you're throwing me off my thinking. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> like trying to help people figure out, you know, what are they looking for? What will suit their, uh, their needs and their preferences. And, um, I mean, in a way, even that is, is part of, uh, for me maintaining my own interest in the hobby because then I, when people ask me questions, I actually do research for them. So even if it's something that they can Google, uh, I do research for them so I can send them relevant information like links and um, to make it as easy as possible because I want to, you know, I want them to take over the world with fountain pens. So um, it's it's being involved in the in the hobby in the community, um, doing stuff with the pens having pens and nibs and inks and paper that you like and you know yeah I've had times where I thought why do I have so many pens and then I went through them and and sold off or donated gave away the pens that I was not crazy about and honestly my love for it came back with full force because it was like okay I'm down to 40 pens that I'm crazy about and that's a really really exciting feeling so it's like starting all over except yeah. with crazy expensive, you know, rare pens or whatever. Yeah, but that could be your focus. That Shiny could be pens. what you like, not necessarily expensive. But I mean, yeah, at some point, Matt said that earlier too, and I agree, you may start out with a preppy and with a safari. And at some point, it may you may find out that there are expensive pens that you like. Are they overpriced? Of course, that's a whole different discussion. We all know that. But you may find that your, your specific taste in pens is... Um, you know uh, the super five hundred dollar pens. Yeah, th that that's that's possible, and yes, they will be expensive, but those will be the pens that you absolutely love, and then it's just uh, it's it's very easy to be enthusiastic. We can justify this all we want, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not trying to justify it, but I'm that that is yeah that is a possibility. No, that doesn't mean that, that there are no having pens I love is part of what keeps me interested in the hobby. Yeah, so that is an honest. Thing. Yeah, and of course, some so. of them are expensive, and some of them are not. As yeah, expensive. some of them are not. We also have a lot of pens so, that, are, that are not not expensive at all, but that, yeah. that some you of them also I mess love. around with. But yeah, yeah it, um, what about you? Yeah. Um, well, uh, first, let me respond to V Prozon in the the chat. He said, "Do you have a pen thunder? Is it more like ooh shiny? Got to have that." Mm -hmm. um, yes, both. 
Um, <laughs> I do have a pen fund. That is a fairly new thing for me. It started toward the end of the second season. So all of the money I make from YouTube ads or from selling my pens or from sponsors or from, you know, my wonderful, wonderful supporters on Patreon, that all goes into a pen. It's actually an entirely separate account. So if it's not, if I don't have the money in that account, I cannot buy any pens, period. That's a fairly new thing because I just barely got out of credit card debt about two months ago for the first time in 10 years. Um, and so I'm not allowing myself to get back into that, um, which goes a long way toward how I maintain my enjoyment in the hobby, actually. Um, I have an addictive personality, always have, and I've talked about this a lot, but when I got in, I got in hard and fast and spent. I, you know, I told you, I added up my first two years. It was almost $20,000 in spending in two years' time on pens, uh, most of it on credit cards. Um, and you know that it was kind of the, the acquisition thing was fun, but if if the hobby is about acquisition, you will get tired of it. There's no question about it. It has to be more than acquisition. And I like what you said, Aziza, about um, helping people, because yeah. I find what it was interesting. I I went to the DC Pen Show. It was my first ever pen show. I'd never been to one before, and um, I I didn't want to go. You know, I'm kind of an antisocial person. It's easy for me to sit here in my my little TV studio at my house and talk about pens. Yeah. But it's, it's hard for me to go out where there's thousands of people and be, you know, I was like, I don't want to have to be on all weekend. Yeah. But what I found was that I was so energized by being around a community that yeah. I came home and I was like, let's get these videos done. You know, it's like, I was like, cause I, that's one of the reasons why I'm so far behind in my season. Cause I took that five month hiatus because I was like, I need a break. Yeah. And then I didn't spend any time talking, thinking, doing anything with pens and I didn't do any of the videos. And so now I'm, you know, instead of having the whole season's worth of videos, done, uh, now it's, uh, but anyway, um, so for me, it's the people connection. Yeah, it's using what you have, worrying less about finding the perfect whatever and enjoying what you have. The perfect um, pen does not exist. It does not exist. The perfect ink does not exist. Um, See, you know, was pretty close. <laughs> good point. Good point. Um, and, and the one thing that I, I, for me, has really changed my appreciation of the hobby is that I no longer worry about whatever the new thing is. Yeah, I just, yeah. I don't care. I don't yeah. have any of the Diamine Shimmertastic inks. I'm not going to buy them. They're nice. They're lovely. They're beautiful. That's fine. I've got 140 bottles of ink I already <laughs> like. I don't need any more. You know, yeah. whether or not it's got glitter in it, it doesn't matter. Um, and then that that way, if I don't worry about what's new, I didn't, you know, the Emerald of Shavor, and before that it was the Stormy Gray or the Lamy Copper Orange. And and, and I, every time something new would come out, it's like, I've got to have it, I've got to have it. And getting away from that mindset has totally changed my appreciation. Yeah. And then kind of once and for all, because because I spend so much time in this hobby, taking a break is vital. You know, if, yeah. if I need to go away for a week and not talk about, think about, post about pens, I do. And and that has helped a lot kind of across the board for me. So That's a very good idea. One I'm still toying with. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes that's you, that's just what you've got to do. But I'm like, I don't have time to take a break. So it's <laughs> obviously I need to take a break, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, someone asked a quick question. Uh, tour of the room. This will be a little tricky because I'm on a, a laptop, but I'll I'll do a quick uh, tour around. Let me unplug everything here so I can show you. Um, but anyway, so let me oh let me switch back to my camera view. So this is a um, it's a small bedroom in my house, and I'll just go. You can see it from here. Um, so this is my studio. Back up a little bit more here. I can't see what I'm showing you. Um, so I have three big softbox lights, and then um, there's a Sony camcorder above the desk for the down shots, and then I have this camera here for my close-ups on the, the shooting, and this is my Panasonic GH4 for my front camera. 
and then I use this. Uh, Oh, sorry. I can't. I can't see what I'm showing you here. You're probably getting all motion sick. Uh, so I use this shotgun mic to record the sound. Ah, sorry. Uh, sound of the the pen on the paper. Um, and then I have over here um, is where I have like my lavalier mic and all of that kind of stuff. And then you know you can see my desk is a gigantic mess right now because I'm in the middle of recording a bunch of videos. So uh, and then my I have up on the ceiling um, the sound absorption panels and uh, along the walls and things like that. So it's um, it's it's quite the production. Um, <laughs> I also have this uh, this microphone that I use when I'm recording audiobooks. So this is my uh, I just keep I record audiobooks in this room as well. So it's it's treated for sound and it's easy. I don't have to take everything down and put it up every time. I just have to get the cameras focused and set up and all that fun stuff. So um, that's, uh, I, I am very fortunate in that I have the space to do it. That is one of the joys of living alone in a four bedroom house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that I can, I can set aside a couple of bedrooms for, for doing this. And, uh, and then, you know, the dog doesn't come in here and get fur over everything and, or knock uh, everything over or knock everything over i just and close the door set right the down. panels on the wall are like toys to chew on exactly tear so. down. <laughs> fortunately luke the dog is not terribly destructive so anyway that's oh. the uh that's the quick tour of my uh of my studio so awesome um all right I like it. so i think that'll do it for this uh yeah. this hangout we'll have to do this again soon yeah um, well thanks. there's lots of questions we did not get to Yep. Yes, right. a lot That's of questions right. we didn't get to. Probably. You know, we just um, making our building up our list in the meantime for yep. the next one. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone who who uh, joined us and yeah. stuck around for most of it. So thank yeah. you, and we will uh, we'll see you all sometime in the future. So, Sounds good. Yes, have a good All one. Right. Bye, everybody. Right. Bye. Bye.